Hi, and welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. We're looking at plate tectonics playlist and a series of videos today and looking at the Wilson cycle in particular. So this is an awesome mechanism that uh, this professor, this gentleman uh, named J. Tuzo Wilson in 1966, he basically looked at seafloor spreading and continental drift and the, the paleomantism uh, from Viner, Matthews and Morley. And within a couple of years, started doing his own research experiments and took, basically applied seafloor spreading. And he also looked at Pangaea the supercontinent from roughly 250 million years ago, and he put them all together and thought, okay, what mechanism, what process, and is going to connect. And basically, his mechanism is a step-by-step -step guide to an basically a, a rift area, a rift zone, the point where there's going to be movement away and spreading, okay, a spreading center, and then there's going to be a, an ocean created, and then there's going to be some sort of closure um, and a subduction zone, and then it's going to close and there's going to be um a um let's put closure okay closure of that ocean so basically it's like a, a start a middle and end of an ocean and this takes into account the global connectivity of plate tectonics it's that holistic overview it's that general idea of how the Earth's crust deforms, is built, and then moves across the surface very slowly over time. Oh, tectonic. And it's that connecting theory and hypothesis that really connects uh, Wegener back from 1912, uh, where he started, through to Hess in 1963 and then obviously with his his theory in 66 really solidified the idea of plate tectonics and boundaries and margins both active margins and passive margins we'll get to that in the next part of the video but this is the kind of the intro part of where he went with using the evidence and new ideas that came out from Hess and from Vine, Matthews, and Morley. All right. All right. So the Wilson cycle is basically a, a four stage process. And the first stage is shown here, it's called rifting. Now, rifting is the process of splitting or diverging or moving things apart. Now, we start with this consistent, solid, connected uh, craton, which is a, a very stable landmass that hasn't changed for a very long time and it kind of stays where it is. And he also uses as the supercontinent Pangaea. Now, Pangaea existed uh, for a really kind of a short time, uh, between 280 million years ago to about 180 million years ago. And you had the connection of Laurentia and Gondwana. Uh, Laurentia was, the, was Eurasia in North America, mostly, and Gondwana it was the South America, Africa, Antarctica, uh, Australasia, and the Indian subcontinent. And this, and this huge landmass all connected. And the Wilson cycle describes how that huge supercontinent would break up. Like what would cause it to break up and what would happen as it's breaking up and what were the different um, parts of geology that we can see today uh, in various um, layers of bedding and you know depths in the in the uh, the crust, how these were formed because 
certain formations in geology are only formed certain ways, and we can use these to, to like trace back the history of an ocean or a landmass or let's say a margin, whether it be a passive margin or an active margin. We can date it back. So this happens where we have the layers of the cenosphere, lithosphere, and the crust. Also the moho there separating the crust and the mantle. And we have the asinosphere, which don't forget is the weak sphere with the L, V, Z. And I have videos on these layers in more detail if you want to go back and watch them. And look at the upper mantle in general. So you have your convection currents. So if you have our rise in magma, let's say it comes up here, it's going to kind of like push on the lithosphere. And it's going to make it kind of like bulge up and uplift. So this whole area starts to uplift with the immense pressure of the uh, the underneath convection currents and upwelling or the uprising of magmatic material. This will mostly be basaltic very mafic, and it's going to be um, not very viscous or low viscosity. So it's going to cause this, and it's going to uh, put a lot of pressure on this part, this part of that supercontinent, that connected crust, that stable craton or craton, and it's going to, you know, have some sort of impact right here as the upwelling um, mantle or asinosphere starts to push on this rock. Now, solid cold crust is very brittle, which means that if you apply pressure at a certain point, a certain threshold, that rock is going to break, fracture, uh, rupture. And this lithosphere is more ductile, which means in terms of deformation, ductile means that it can be bent. It can be, uh, you know, applied pressure and force over a certain area, and it can bend, and it will stay bent. That means ductile. Okay. Whereas the asinosphere, that's more plastic, and that's more elastic in nature, where like a plastic bottle where you can, you can move it, you can deform it, you can change its shape, but it'll go back to its original shape of a plastic bottle. Okay, also depends on the force applied, yes. So the crust is brittle, the sphere is more ductile, um, and then you've got the elastic plastic, um, <laughs> elastic plastic, uh, a cenosphere, which has the convection currents working to produce upwelling, and rising magma in this part. So once this has taken place, and over some amount of time, that consistent upwelling is going to do two things. First, it's going to progressively move that stable craton, start to move the left-hand side this way, the right-hand side this way, and start to spread, split, or move away, and try to break into two pieces this once single supercontinent uh, and we use Pangaea, we also use Rodinia or other ones in the past, but Pangaea is most recent. So what you're looking at is the first part, first step is the is the the forcing the forcing movement by the uprising magma underneath. And then what you happen is, is there is some sort of depression right here and a, a full graben or graben is produced. That is a term, a German uh, name term given to a fault, a part of the land that actually gets uh, subsided or it gets put a uh, drop down lower. Because think about it, if you're pulling, you know, intentional forces, Ten, uh, tensional forces are being applied 
to this stable supercontinent, this large landmass, you know, and it's being pulled apart. The rock or the crust that is in the center right here, it is being left behind and it's going to drop down and form a graben. A half graben is just on one side. This is a full graben because it happens on both sides at the same time. And then this part of the crust, be it continental or, or uh, you know, thick or thin continental crust, depends on the location, it's going to be even thinner. So this is a thinner crust right here. And that allows, it's like a multiplier effect, a positive feedback loop, allowing more and more of the uprising magma to uh, melt or burn or move through the thinner crust, thus, again, causing this uh, movement to accelerate, thus pulling apart the once supercontinent into two separate pieces or two crusts. All right, or as we know them, continents. So in the next video, we're going to look at the other stages, two to four, look at the implications, and briefly discuss margins as well. If you want to see more about passive versus active margins, there'll be a video and there's a link in the top corner. Uh, you can click on to see that and also um, check out the uh, previous videos linking up Wegener to Hess to Vine and Matthews and Magnetism, uh, which goes with this uh, Wilson Cycle video. All right, thanks everyone. Please subscribe if you like the video and leave a message, a comment, that'd be great. I really appreciate it.